Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our mayor, Buddy Dyer. Good afternoon and welcome to the February 9th, 2015 regularly scheduled meeting of the Orlando City Council. We're going to begin today's proceedings with the invocation offered by Pastor Paul v Valo. Did I Valo? Paul Valo, who is a founding and lead pastor at Christ Church Orlando in downtown Soto, Commissioner Sheehan. Christ Church Orlando is a demographically, socially, and economically diverse church and embraces a cross-section of young adults, families, and seniors of varying races and nationalities through the church's We Care program. CCO actively partners with several organizations to meet critical needs in Central Florida, such as Ronald McDonald House, Nathan's Hope, New Missions, Sneaker Outreach, Clean the World, Change the World, and Fresh Start Ministries. After the invocation, we'll be led in the pledge by District 3 Commissioner Robert Stewart. Would everybody please stand? Let us pray. Our God of all creation, whose power and understanding is greater than ourselves, you are merciful and indeed the giver of all good gifts, and we thank you today for all of your blessings. We pray for those who are entrusted with the governance and the welfare of our citizens in this community. Lord, please send your wisdom and right judgment upon them. Be with them in their discussions and deliberations. Let their ears be open to listen and help them to be wise in their decisions as they make sound judgments for those who are placing their trust and their confidence in this leadership. Dear Lord, we ask you that you would grant them humility to always seek your will in all they say and do. We declare that the earth is yours and so all the glory and honor is yours also, our loving and merciful Father. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you for joining us. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Let's call the meeting to order, and would you call the roll and make a determination of a quorum, please? Commissioner Gray? Here. Commissioner Ortiz? Here. Commissioner Stewart? Here. Commissioner Sheehan? Here. Commissioner Hill? Here. Commissioner Ings? Here. Mayor Dyer? Here. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's take up for consideration the minutes of the City Council Workshop Agenda Review Meeting and City Council Meeting Minutes from so January 26, second. 2015. Motion by Commissioner Ortiz, second by Commissioner Stewart. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And so the motion carries. All right. It is my great pleasure to welcome the delegation from Yuriyasu, which is our sister city, um, as we celebrate 25 years of our sister city relationship, I had the opportunity, I've made two trips to your Yasu, the latest one being in September of this year, and have, I can tell you, I've never been more warmly received on any international mission that I have um, had the opportunity to participate in. It is our oldest sister city relationship. We have many endeavors that take place, trading runners for our various marathons and half marathons. Um, one of my favorite memories, Commissioner Stewart, was uh, putting together the baseball teams that challenged each other. And my son was uh, one of the participants back then. Gosh, seems like just yesterday, but that's been about eight years ago, I think. So I'm going to ask Kathy DeVault, who is our Director of Strategic Partnerships, to um, give further comments regarding the relationship and the visit. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, Commissioners. As Mayor Dyer alluded to, we are very honored to have some very special guests with us today. Guests who have traveled more than 7,000 miles to visit our city, some for the first time and some having visited us many times. These special guests are from our sister city, Uriyasu, Japan, and include Uriyasu's Deputy Mayor, Nakamura, 
other members of city staff, and several members of the Uraiasu International Friendship Association. This delegation is here to celebrate the 25th anniversary of our sister city relationship. There are several local partners who have helped to keep our relationship strong all these years, and I'd like to acknowledge just a few. Our friends from Dr. Phillips High School who have hosted student exchanges with Uraiasu for more than two decades. Members of the Orlando Runners Club and Track Shack for the strong relationship with the Uraiasu Runners Club. For more than 20 years, Uraiasu has sent runners to compete in our OUC half marathon, and runners from Orlando have traveled to Uraiasu to compete in the Tokyo Bay half. In fact, we just had a group of runners return from Uraiasu last week, and we've got a few members of the Orlando Runners Club in the back here. Our friends at the Orange County History Center, Orange County Library, and Orange County Public Schools who host our delegations each time they visit. In fact, Principal Lynn Wassett and her team at Rock Lake Elementary School hosted our guests this morning. Students at Uraiasu Elementary School and Rock Lake Elementary School have created beautiful drawings and messages of peace that will go in a time capsule to be opened in 10 years at our 35th anniversary. And certainly, someone you all know and appreciate, Takako Johnson, a longtime member of our International Advisory Committee and our city's liaison with Uraiasu. This week, we also had the pleasure to introduce our guests to two new things that have come to Orlando since they last visited. They had the opportunity to ride Sunrail, mm -hmm. and this afternoon, immediately after leaving here, they will tour our Performing Arts Center. I'd also like to thank all of you for greeting our delegations over the years. Each and every one of you has done it, I think except Commissioner Hill, because we haven't had a chance yet. But trust me, you'll get to see lots of our friends from Uraiasu. While the internet and technology make it easier to learn about and communicate with other countries and cultures, there is no topping a face-to-face -face meeting, which is why we are honored our sister city residents have traveled all this way to see Orlando and celebrate this moment momentous occasion. Now, Mayor, if you'd please read the proclamation. Proclamation, City of Orlando. <clears throat> Whereas the City of Orlando established a sister city relationship with Uriyasu, Japan in November 1989, and whereas our longstanding relationship with Uriyasu was founded on the relationship of our two cities have with Disney, Orlando being the home of Walt Disney World, Uriyasu being home to Tokyo Disney, and whereas one of Orlando's most active sister cities, Uriyasu, sends friendship and cultural delegations to Orlando several times each year, and whereas through the years the city of Orlando has been honored to receive delegations from the Uriyasu International Friendship Association, Uriyasu Youth Group, and members of the Uriyasu Runners Club who have traveled to Orlando to compete in the OUC Half Marathon and have been hosted by our local Orlando Runners Club. And whereas the sister city exchanges between our two cities have resulted in a deeper understanding between the residents of both cities and a strengthened bond of friendship and trust, and whereas the city of Orlando expresses sincere appreciation to the many volunteers and ambassadors who have been involved in the success of this unique international friendship and whereas today the city of Orlando commemorates the 25th anniversary of our sister city relationship and looks forward to strengthening the goodwill and mutual trust and respect between our cities in the years and decades to come now therefore I Mayor Buddy Dyer do hereby proclaim Monday February 9th 2015 as Orlando Uriyasu sister city commemoration day in the city of Orlando and I would ask all of the city commissioners to step down for pictures please
February is Black History Month, and we had a kickoff to the Black History events on February the 3rd last week, and I'd like to have Marcia come up and describe some of the events and what we'll be doing during Black History Month. Marcia? Thank you so much, Mayor Dyer. City Commissioners, good afternoon, and everyone who's here. Um, as Mayor, Minch, Mayor Dyer mentioned, Black History Month gives us an opportunity to celebrate and recognize significant contributions of African Americans, past and present, uh, in our city, our region, our state, nation, and our world. And last Tuesday, as Mayor Dyer mentioned, he and city commissioners joined uh, Onyx Magazine, which is Florida's uh, major African American owned magazine. And along with partners and um, from the Orange County NAACP, the Central Florida Urban League, and the African American Chamber of Commerce uh, for a Black History Month kickoff. Um, it was a great event, a cultural program that uh, we're so glad that our commissioners and the mayor were part of. And we honored two outstanding organizations at that um, celebration, uh, the Negro Spiritual Scholarship Foundation, uh, which has been longstanding in our community for more than 18 years and also Young Fathers of Central Florida, another um, unique outstanding organization that supports uh, dads being very active in their children's lives. Um, we also honored an outstanding civic leader, Reverend Canon Nelson Pender, who all of us just call Father Pender, and then two future leaders, outstanding seniors, Yule Delius and Joel Pierre, uh, one from Evans High School and one from Oak Ridge. Our program was hosted by LaFontaine Oliver, who is president and general manager of WMFE Public Broadcasting here in Orlando. And um, our Office of Community Affairs and Human Relations uh, coordinates our annual celebration of Black History Month along with my colleague Reggie McGill in the mayor's office and a number of city um, employees who serve on our committee. Some of them are here, as well as some of our honorees. I'd like to take a moment, Mayor, if I may, to just uh, thank them for their participation in planning this over the past two or three months. And uh, that's, uh, as I mentioned, Reggie McGill is here, Patricia Newton is here, Walter Hawkins, Elena Kennedy, and also Gary Alderman. So thank you all for your support and involvement and actually helping to coordinate, make it happen. And then we have uh, one of our outstanding organizations that was recognized last Tuesday, represented by um, two board members and also the managing director, and that is the Negro Spiritual Scholarship Foundation. Would you guys stand, please, and we can recognize you and thank you for the long-term <laughs> cultural opportunities you have given to so many of our young people, uh, giving hundreds of thousands in scholarships to our young people, but most of all training and honing their talents. So thank you for that. And uh, it was a fantastic program, and uh, we appreciate the honorees, the participants, and uh, committee members, and all of the partners who actually helped to make this possible. We appreciate their efforts, and mostly mayor and commissioners, we appreciate your leadership in this regard. We are, as Mayor Dyer likes to say, a, commu a community of diversity, and uh, we believe in celebrating our diversity. So at this time, I would like to thank the commissioners, thank the mayor, and ask Mayor Dyer if you would please read the proclamation. Thank you, Marcia. City of Orlando proclamation. Whereas black history is an integral part of American history because African Americans played an essential role in building and shaping this great country, Therefore, February is nationally recognized as Black History Month. NRAC's Black History Month was originated by the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, founded in 1915 by Carter G. Woodson, an African-American historian, author, and journalist. And whereas throughout Black History Month, we recognize the extraordinary achievements and acknowledge the many contributions African Americans have made in our nation and the world. And whereas the story of African Americans is a story of resilience and perseverance, with contributions being made in all areas, including education, medicine, science, technology, the space program, art, public service, the military, business, politics, human and civil rights, engineering, sports, entertainment, and much more. And whereas this year's Black History Month theme, a century of black life, history, and culture celebrates the achievements of the last hundred years, although the history of African Americans dates back to the founding of our nation 
and whereas the City of Orlando embraces its diversity and acknowledges the invaluable contributions of its African American residents and visitors as we celebrate Black History Month, now therefore I, Buddy Dyer, Mayor of the City of Orlando, hereby do proclaim the month of February 2015 as Black History Month in the City of Orlando. Okay, that's all of our awards recognitions and presentations, so I'm going to move into the mayor's update. So just a few things. Um, the DOT's Ultimate I-4 construction project is about to begin uh, with some of the preliminary work starting this month and the major work starting in the summertime. It's a $2.3 billion project that is going to, on the good side, create thousands of local construction jobs and boost our economy. Uh, it'll eventually transform our region and enhance the livability in our community. Um, with the construction starting in a couple of months, they have traffic um, congestion management, but there are also alternative modes of transportation people may consider. Sunrail, of course, is up and operational. Carpooling, adjusting your schedules. Uh, to learn more about it, visit ultimateI4.com to stay up to date on alternative routes and road closures and sign up. You can sign up there for alerts. Valentine's Day is this Saturday, so I want to wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day and early Valentine's Day and encourage you to think local uh, as you are buying gifts for your loved one and or going out to dinner and visit many of our um, Orlando Main Street districts. And speaking of Valentine's Day, uh, we, I can think of no better Valentine's Day gift than a new free home composter. <laughs> hey, Mike, could you come down? I think the composter is behind can the, I have one here? yes, you can have one, Commissioner Stewart. We have an 80, one of the 80 gallon composters on display today. And using one of them will help us uh, reduce nearly 25% of the waste that goes into our landfills. And we have uh, overwhelming interest. I think we've had 900 residents sign up for composters already. Mike, why don't you just step to the mic and just give us a quick little overview of the composters. Well, it's a testament to the interest in the community and hopefully the quality of the idea, but also almost as important as that, I think it's a testimony to the reach of modern social media. It was posted on our Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, Thursday afternoon, early in the afternoon. By Friday at 5 o'clock, we had over 500 requests yeah, for home composters. A few of those, unfortunately, are outside the city limits. This is only available to residents inside the city limits. But as of this morning at 8 o'clock, we had 900 requests. It's a few more, quite honestly, than I thought would happen in the first four days, but we have ordered more already. I approved an order at 4.30 this morning, so we are on top of ordering more. And it's an opportunity for people to contribute to the sustainability of our community by composting some of their fine items like leaves and food waste in their backyard. That's waste that doesn't have to get in, put in one of our trucks and driven to the landfill to be processed or buried. So it's an excellent opportunity for each one of us, if we choose to individually contribute to the bigger picture. 
So with the addition of the composters, we now have the ability to recycle um, pretty much everything that's in our waste stream. An awful lot of it, yes, sir. Okay. You want to demonstrate how you use the composter? It's actually amazingly simple. <laughs> um, when, you, when it gets delivered, you'll just want to um, take the... It'll be delivered in one piece. There is some information attached to it, a little guide on how it works. Online, there are some um, inf additional information about how composting works. And then there will be a few classes made available by our friends at the University of Florida IFAS program, which is the Agricultural Sciences Division. I forget exactly what all four letters mean, but it used to be called uh, the Agricultural uh, Extension Agency. And quite simply, you'll put leaves into the composter or something fine like that, real sm fine trimmings. Leaves are your best bet. And food waste from the kitchen. We don't want um, bones and skin. The guide will help you with that. But just some table scraps, things left over, things left. Unfortunately, at my home, it would be leftovers that we didn't quite eat in time. <laughs> and uh, and you simply put it in a compact to put the a composter, excuse me, put the lid back on it. After about a little more than a month, there's a little door in the front and you can shovel out with, by inserting a shovel, perfectly clean, excellent quality potting soil. Compost soil is just potting soil. It's the same grade of stuff you might buy at Lowe's or Home Depot in a bag. You can then spread that on your flower. You, first, you can add it to a garden if you have one. You can put it on your flower beds or uh, the hedges in front of my house will be greatly enhanced by this. Mm -hmm. And we are going to offer at a few of our community gardens, it'll be on our webpage by the end of the week, a container where folks who have composted but can't use all that they have and don't have a neighbor who wants it from them, they can bring it to a drop-off container at many of our community gardens. And it's as simple as taking the lid off. Okay. Put your material inside, turn it, and wait. And I'm good at that part. The waiting? The waiting part. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. So I have taken delivery of my composter um, this weekend, and we'll start with my first table scraps tonight. The last thing I want to mention of note from today's agenda is uh, an item that will allow us to move forward with a new Paramore limo line. The third of our limo lines, the Lime Line, and it will serve uh, the Paramore neighborhood, Create a Village, the um, Florida A&M Law School, and the courthouse, and construction will begin in the spring. Kathy D, if our, uh, our Takaka, if our um, delegation from Muriyasu would like to be excused to go to the Performing Arts Center, now would probably be a pretty good time to do that. We are going to move on to the consent agenda, and the consent agenda is a number of items that are acted upon through a single vote of council. We give each of our council members an opportunity to comment on items from the consent agenda and or update you of, with significant events that are occurring in their districts. And we rotate the order that we do that. Today we're going to begin with District 3, Commissioner, Commissioner Stewart. Thank you, Mayor, and um, it's great to see the group from Ural City here. Um, I had a chance, as uh, Mayor had mentioned, to visit there in 2005, I think is what it was, um, and uh, maybe a little bit earlier, but it was a wonderful opportunity to go and play baseball and umpire baseball there with a group of kids. I took, uh, my son was part of the group, and then 
they had come, we went over there, they had come back again, and then had a chance to spend time with your son to do the same thing. What a wonderful uh, group uh, of people that were here. I've never heard anything uh, negative in any way, uh, and it's just been a wonderful um, um, uh, a friendship between us, and I'm glad we continue to do that. A um, couple of quick updates in the district. Um, uh, this Saturday night is the, oh, this Saturday afternoon, I'm sorry, is the Manello Museum Art uh, uh, Annual Folk Festival from 2 to 7. Uh, you can leave there, then go over to the Valentine Stroll at Lou Gardens at 7 o'clock uh, and, and stroll through the gardens. It'll be a chilly night, so wear something um, warm. And then on the 21st, uh, they have the great seed swaps. Those of you who are growing, um, uh, they're doing their spring seed swaps, so bring seeds and t drop those off and take some more with them, take some others back with you. And then, of course, rivet the exhibits going on. So a lot is going on at Lou Gardens, and uh, it's really neat to see uh, the, the interest uh, and, the, and the excitement about what's going on over there. Uh, the Wetlands Festival is in uh, a week from Saturday. Uh, I always love going out there and getting a chance, but I've uh, shared with a couple of our community areas uh, and community neighborhoods to please come and get a chance to take a tour of the Orlando Wetlands. You, you will be uh, impressed with what we've accomplished over the course of the past 20 or 25 years uh, in the wetlands area. Uh, on to the um, uh, agenda. Uh, the only thing I really have on the agenda I shared at the uh, consent, I mean at the um, uh, agenda review, uh, was abstaining from uh, uh, voting on item C2 and on J5. Um, there is probably not, um, it's a concern of mine only because from a standpoint that part of that money goes to administration and part of that administration is my brother. So I felt like it'd be best to do this and I've done it on several occasions. So um, I'll be filing that paperwork with the clerk. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move to District 4. Commissioner Sheehan. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I um, want to encourage everybody to come out this weekend for the pause in the park. Mayor Dyer, I know you're bringing Sammy. I'm bringing yes. Sienna. So, yeah. We're going to be quite a few people out this weekend at Lake Yola Park. It's going to be at 9 a.m. on Saturday. And again, it's to help um, homeless pets find forever homes and support our, um, our Pet Alliance, which does great work in uh, helping provide pet health care to people who can't afford it, in addition to spaying and neutering services and finding forever homes to abandoned pets. It's a great organization. So if y'all can come out and support us, we'd sure like, like you to come. And uh, we do have a city team. We're doing, doing pretty well with our fundraising. So we love supporting this organization. Um, Bumby Avenue in my district, unfortunately, there's been a slight delay with getting construction done. It was supposed to begin soon. About a four month delay, it's gonna be a 20 month project. It's not gonna be fun, construction never is, but anybody who's driven on Bumby Avenue between Korean and, and Colonial knows what a nightmare it is. We have to completely dig up the road. And uh, we're hoping that with uh, new bidding that uh, we can finally start construction late spring, early summer. It's gonna be a 20 month project and again, phased, but uh, we'll be working with the neighborhood on that. But again, Bumby's in such abysmal disrepair, we have got to get something done. Um, on the composting, I'm delighted to see this happening citywide. Mills 50 actually had been selling these composters five years ago, and they were very, very popular. Um, the only problem we had was we could only do it one day, and uh, not everybody can come out, so I'm delighted their 900 homes are doing it. Um, composting can divert over 300 pounds of waste per household per year, um, probably over that with leaves and things like that that we have, so I'm, I'm delighted to see it. Um, I've been recycling for five years, and the rules are no meat, no dog or cat waste, um, but you can do chicken poop, and those of you have have urban chickens, it's a great way to compost. And um, like I say, I've been doing it for many, many years, and, and I think it's just great. And I, that's why I have such amazing bromeliads is because I use my compost to do potted plants, and they're great. So I'm so happy to see this going citywide. Um, and it you know, started with the, with the hip folks in Mills 50 wanting to do composters. I think it's just great that this is catching on citywide now. Um, on item C6, Lighthouse of Center Floor, I'm delighted to see this employment for visually impaired folks, office and warehouse space. I think this is a wonderful program. Delighted to, su to support them. And uh, that's all I had on the agenda. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move to District 5, Commissioner Hill. Thank you, sir. Uh, I first would like to send uh, condolences to uh, Bishop Thomas Chenault's family who passed away uh, this morning, a long time uh, pastor there in the Paramore area. 910 Livingston Church of God, uh, a church that I grew up in for a little while as a little girl. Um, excited about the uh, grand opening of the men's coalition there in the Paramore area where there's now uh, 250 beds where men are uh, uh, being healed and 
Uh, the lives are being transformed in a holistic manner where they're just not giving them shelter, but they're treating the inner and outer man. And uh, I'm really excited about that uh, project. And thank you, commissioners. I know you voted on it well before I got here. And um, uh, uh, thank you for those efforts. Uh, it's, it's a great thing. And I, I've gone over there and visit many of those men. And you could see uh, the pride in their eyes and, and how they, you know, stick their chests out. Uh, also, uh, the Butler's uh, Preserve now, um, they broke ground a few months back, I think, Mayor, yourself, and uh, Commissioner Butler. And um, they did, in January, they had a, a, a home bliss uh, where they built eight homes in one week. And eight homeowners, uh, myself and the mayor was there, uh, uh, with the different developers, uh, and they gave eight families the keys to their homes, uh, with another 50 to come with Habitat uh, for Humanity. So that was a great effort. Also, the, the mayor mentioned the I-4, uh, 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 ultimate I-4, and I'd like to thank the, the mayor and his staff, and General Coulter of the Blueprint, uh, with their diligent efforts, over a, a hundred uh, Paramore residents will start apprenticeship programs on that project where they will now become skilled laborers and upon completion they will uh, make anywhere from uh, 20 to 30 dollars an hour and this project is a six-year project and hopefully uh, in that length of time we'll have some homes there in Paramore and they would uh, become homeowners there in the Paramore area so that's uh, that's great for the city and it's great for uh, at least I know 100 people who lives are going to uh, just take off and they'll now have a career. Um, Rock Lake, uh, they're in the District 5 area. I'd like to uh, give them a, a, a big congratulations. Um, OPD Night um, Neighborhood Watch awarded them the Neighborhood uh, of the Year. And uh, that was a, a great, great, great uh, moment there for the uh, Rock Lake, Spring Lake community because they are uh, unified HOA there in that area. Um, and that's, that's all about it, Mayor, for what I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. District 6, Commissioner Rings. Thank you, Mayor. And I'd also like to extend my condolences in reference to Bishop Thomas E. Chenault's uh, passing away this morning. Uh, Bishop Chenault was a community activist and a very good friend with uh, Reverend Judge and uh, Reverend Hagrid, uh, who were also activists back uh, in the day. And of course, he, he is the former pastor of 910 Livingston Street Church of God. Um, my condolences also go out to his wife, Winifred, uh, they are constituents in District 6, live a couple of houses away from Commissioner Mabel Butler. Uh, condolences to his wife, Winifred, the family and friends, and also Bishop Kevin Cabarrus, who is like a son to uh, Bishop Chenault. So this is a great loss uh, within our community. On the agenda, uh, item C8, the Municipal Planning Board meeting minutes, um, I really do support this effort of annexation and zoning for 4296 Columbia Street, and I think that's going to add some uh, great commercial perspective there to, uh, to the district. And I also support the GMP and zoning and CUP for the El Claudia Allen Center, thanks to Commissioner Mabel Butler, who is still working hard for our community, and also thank you to Lori Botts. Uh, who had the vision to expand the parking there at the Claudia Allen Center. Uh, we've got two residential lots that will be turned into parking lots, and this will um, help us to increase some of the parking needs there at the El Claudia Allen Center. And uh, with Lori's vision, the purchasing of the lot west of the uh, El Claudia Allen Center expands that lot and um, it vastly expands that lot and the overall parking capabilities. So that's gonna be really great and it's something that we've been after for years and thank you, Mayor Dyer, for your assistance and support in that as well. And then of course, with the Black History 
uh, reception and commemoration on this past Tuesday in the City Hall Rotunda. I just really want to say that it was a great program and specifically with the Bethune-Cookman University Choir and how they sing the Negro National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. I had not heard it like that, but it was outstanding. So my hat's off to the whole committee that really put this together. This past Saturday, I was in Eatonville, Florida with um, Mayor Bruce, Bruce Mount. Uh, they were celebrating their joint inaugural Heritage Day celebration, Walter. Uh, the Sigmas were there to be on hand, as well as the Zetas, and uh, Rosa Pickett, uh, the local president for the Zetas, um, and also Dr. Ronald Fulmore. He's a um, chiropractor in District 6. He's also a Sigma. And so they did some great things for the uh, Eatonville community champions. Of those community champions, one was 96 years old, and that was N.Y. Theory's mother. And so she was on hand to receive her award. And the other was 94 years old, and um, she was there to receive her award. And both ladies walked up gracefully, you know, without any problems to receive their award. And then the former mayor of Eatonville, Mayor Abraham uh, Gordon, was on hand to receive an award as well. And there were 46 students from Hungerford Elementary School that were on the honor roll. And so they were honored as academic uh, champions. I'd just like to say my father went to Hungerford Prep School uh, as a young teenager. Also on Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Frontline Outreach, the Orlando Police Department Teen Forum took place. Chief John Mina was there, along with several of the officers, sergeants, and lieutenants. And this forum uh, involved uh, police encounters, uh, role play with police officers, and questions and answers. Um, the moderator and the MC was attorney Veranda Jackson. Uh, she's the president and founder of EHAP, Everything Has a Price, and her mission is to make a positive difference in the lives of others. Uh, Bishop Allen Wiggins, the Hope Church pastor and chairman of the Frontline Outreach Board of Directors was, was also on hand. Uh, this was a very well attended event by the teens and also their parents or other family members, adult family members that were there with them. Also coming up uh, Saturday, February 28th, in celebration of Black History Month is my Walk for Peace and Job Fair. And uh, we're gonna take off from Frontline Outreach at 10 a.m. Uh, to Hankins Park. We're gonna walk along C.R. Smith Street and Goldwyn Avenue to Hankins Park. So it'll start at 10 a.m. and it'll end at 1 p.m. in the park. We're looking to have vendors, employers there uh, so that the people can come and actually apply for and get jobs on the, on the spot. Uh, our goal is to commemorate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the Black History Month and to celebrate the achievements of black Americans and, and recognize the central role that African Americans had in U.S. history and really to bring peace into our neighborhoods, communities, and around the world. So this is gonna be an exciting time for us. Uh, this is an annual thing that we do uh, to help support our community. And the last thing I have, Mayor, is Eccleston Elementary School will have a welcome reception tonight uh, from 5 p.m. to 5.45 p.m. in the Media Center of course, we all know that Eccleston was one of those schools that was totally rebuilt by Orange County Public Schools, so that's uh, a great thing. So they're opening up their school to the, um, to the community. And then uh, immediately following that welcome reception, they're going to have uh, some recognition, too, from 6 to 8 p.m., the school and cafeteria dedication and this would be the Rufus C. Brooks Cafeteria. So that's going to be a great thing for our community. And thank you, and that's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move to District 1, Commissioner Gray. 
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a quick uh, plug for some upcoming community meetings. I have an annual community meeting first week in March in three different locations throughout District 1 where I uh, basically take the opportunity to listen to constituents to find out what we're doing right and what we need to improve on. So quick plug for that. Mailings are going out to all the residents of District 1, but uh, in the event people want more details, it's certainly on our website. So thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. And finally, District 2, Commissioner Ortiz. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, let me start with agenda item C2. Uh, Kathy, I want to thank you for being there for me. <laughs> I had a lot of questions about it. I want to congratulate Orlando Inc. for what they're doing is about time somebody takes initiative around here in the region in terms of international business and export. We have become the epicenter of the world. We can uh, definitely use that. So thank you for the initiative. Thank you for your work. And I'm looking forward to the result and to getting involved too. Really looking forward to it. So, on items of my district, our District 2 Government Academy started two weeks ago. Last Tuesday, we had our State of Florida Government class and City of Orlando attorney Kyle Shepard. You can look up Kyle and <laughs> give a great presentation. A great presentation, so far, possibly the best. Uh, we have always admired you for the way you teach, Kyle. You're very thorough, so we really appreciate it. Everybody was very excited about it. Um, that's going on. Uh, we have academies in Spanish and English in terms, and we teach about uh, federal government, state government, uh, county, city, uh, the board, uh, school board, and every item of the city government, especially for those coming from other countries, uh, in order to teach them about how we do government around here. And is a way of also getting the community involved on matters of government. So for those of you, it's not necessarily for district two, it's for everybody in the city and nearby in the county. So we have, they can call our telephone number at the city and we can align them to one of our academy classes. I'd like to congratulate Commissioner Regina Hill and Samuel Commissioner Ings and the Onyx Magazine and the mayor for a great Black History Month kickoff event here at the City Hall last week. It was very nice, great event. Um, thank you for your hospitality. Um, I was also invited by Doc Dr. Anthony Portigrietti uh, from Florida Christian University and his family to do a tour of their excellent assisted living facility that will be opening at the end of May in our district. So far it looks very nice. We're going to have over, I believe that's going to create over 200 positions, jobs and close to 160 uh, beds. So, and it's, it's a state of the art facility uh, assistant living facility, and, and we're really proud of their commitment and their partnership. Um, I want to—I have a special story to tell about OPD because uh, <laughs> it's something that really makes us proud. And I, I when it comes to OPD, uh, these stories have to be broadcast. Last Friday, I had a <coughs> constituent that came to City Hall, and came to me with a complaint about uh, some illegal issues going in certain area of the district, and I immediately called Captain Vales. Captain Vales, within minutes, uh, mobilized some of his officers, and the matter was taken care of. And, uh, there's four, four arrests involved and, and some weapons involved, and this was in, in, in minutes. I mean, this, this was a true quick operation, uh, almost like they say in the Marines, you adapt and overcome. Uh, these guys did a great job, so kudos to the Orlando Police Department, kudos to Captain Vales and his team over there. Uh, thank you, Chief. I have a message to our constituents, not only for District 2, but for the whole city and those that are come visiting. You know, the city of Orlando, we, we're proud to, to offer many amenities. Uh, we have venues. I mean, this is a great city. This is, I often call it the epicenter of the world, but some people still don't get it. They still, they smoke cigarettes and they throw the cigarette butt out on the, on the road and if they have a piece of paper, wrap or whatnot, they throw it out on the, the street. Let's stop doing this. We have. We have places to put the, the garbage. It shouldn't be the streets of the city of Orlando. Let's go ahead and work together. Let's continue making the city of Orlando the epicenter of the world. Let's keep it clean. And Mayor, I would suggest we start a campaign, some sort of campaign with our staff, com uh, uh, communications or whatnot, in order to make this uh, clear and evident that it is our intent to, to fight this. This is our city, and we're very proud of our city. So let's go ahead and keep it clean. Um, last but not least, I want to once again uh, extend a special welcome to 
our delegates, they're already left, but from Uruyatsu, Japan, celebrating the 25 years of our relationship. And happy Valentine's to everybody. That's all I have, Mayor. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan. Commissioner Ortiz, I'll take that as a second. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. We're going to recess without objection the City Council meeting and convene the CRA meeting. First item of business is CRA advisory board minutes from the October 22nd, 2014 meeting. Is there a motion to accept those minutes? Move to accept. Second. Motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Second is accepting meeting minutes from the CRA Advisory Board for December 10th, 2014. Second. Motion by Commissioner Stewart, second by Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Three is approving minutes from the CRA meeting January 12th, 2015. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Number four is approving CRA meeting minutes from January 26, 2015 meeting. Motion by Commissioner Stewart. Second. Second by Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, so the motion carries. Number five is the companion item to, I think it was C2, C2, mm -hmm. which is approving the Foundation for Building Community Inc. funding agreement. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Motion by Commissioner Hill. Second. Second by Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? All right, number six is an item that's not a companion from the consent agenda. <laughs> Thomas? Okay, thank you, Mayor. And good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioners. Item number six is approving MEBA funding and agreement for the Design House of Color LLC. Uh, as always, if you'd like to give a uh, little context and remind you that MEBA was approved, of course, by this board in 2006 and updated in 2010. And then, of course, the intent of the program is to focus and encourage the retention uh, as well as creation of businesses uh, in the Paramore community. MEBA provides uh, qualified applicants with up to $40,000 um, in um, monetary assistance for purposes including uh, relocation expenses, capital equipment, and other startup costs, as well as marketing. Uh, there's a seven-member uh, MEBA advisory board uh, with one member each from BBIF, HBIF, and the National Entrepreneur Center, uh, two members of that board from the CRA staff, including its director, who is the director of urban development, and two members uh, from the city of Orlando, one from the Economic Development Department and one from Business and Financial Services. That advisory board reviews each and every uh, application. Um, uh, prior, about four weeks prior to the to, to the meeting, they receive that and they have uh, ample time. And they get they receive all the consulting reports and whatnot. Um, they look at the business plan. They look at projections. They look at the history of the individual, uh, the applicant, um, other pertinent details such as proposed lease agreements, um, and of course they look for the proof of the minimum investment, which is 10 percent, amongst other things. I'd like to point out that there have been 13 businesses to date since 2006 which have actually received funding. Uh, from the MEBA program. Um, and it may interest you to know that uh, all but four, nine of those businesses have actually successfully com completed the MEBA program. Successful completion uh, is sustaining the business within the Paramore area for three years after the, uh, the award. Today's applicant, as I said, is the Design House of Color LLC. The owner and operator is Dr. Renee Forbes Williams. Um, the um, Design House of Color will be located at City View at 595 West Church Street. Uh, it's a very unique process, uh, unique concept, I should say. It's a combination of an educational training for doing low-cost uh, garment printing and decorating, um, as well as um, providing a marketplace or retail opportunity for both the students as well as um, uh, graduates of the program and uh, retailing by um, the De Design House of Color uh, owners themselves. Just uh, location. Target market, and we thought that the target market is a very realistic one. Uh, age, um, you can see 20s to 40s, African American females, singles, high, uh, high school education with a, probably a fairly low uh, income, if any, um, in the Paramore, Pine Hills, Mercy Drive, Holden Heights, Carver Shores, and Inglewood. Uh, areas 
and then the target retail customers would include uh, individuals, uh, whoever's seeking one of a kind or unique uh, clothing um, products with a sufficient level of disposable income, including but not restricted to, of course, uh, people that will pass by this location all the time on the way to uh, something at one of our, our, our wonderful venues in downtown Orlando, as well as downtown residents who may avail themselves to it, and students in the area, and of course, some of the employees that work in the downtown area. There's actually no direct competitors for this concept. It's a fairly unique concept. Uh, there is a, um, a, a, a um, Sanford Brown, which is a fashion design uh, school that offers a BA program uh, with a cost of over $60,000. So obviously their demographic, uh, their target demographic students are going to be completely different. And Orlando Tech does offer a fashion technology and production services program, uh, a thousand plus hour course. Uh, but of course it focuses on more traditional sewing and alt alterations. Management staff, as I said, Dr. Forbes Williams is the owner and manager, very impressive individual, uh, has both undergraduate as well as postgraduate degrees uh, in accounting, uh, formal training from the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York, um, decades of experience as a business owner as well as an educator and an accountant. In addition, uh, Dr. Forbes Williams has a list of advisors with expertise in adult education, training, entrepreneurship, marketing, as you can see there, retail strategy and business law to assist her uh, in this endeavor. The proposed staff would consist of part-timers, two to three part-time instructors as needed, two part-time managers uh, with experience, and two other part-time employees for both um, teaching assistants as well as any customer service. Um, sales and financial projections the first year, a very realistic 202, uh, just over $202,000 is projected revenue. You see the breakdown there in annual costs estimated at just over 186000 yielding about a $16,500 modest uh, profit uh, the first year. The breakdown of startup costs, immediate startup costs are just over $54,500. You can see the breakdown there. It includes capital equipment, some rent abatements, site improvements, and marketing. Uh, there's an additional $102,000 plus uh, dollars in capital equipment that will be financed uh, for a total uh, cost to start the business of $157,491 and of course Design House of Colors is requesting financial assistance from MEBA in the amount of the full $40,000. The MEBA consultant um, had a couple of recommendations. I uh, felt like it would be a good idea for um, not only students to be able to um, retail their products, but uh, for graduates to be able to uh, come in and, um, and pay a fee uh, for what she calls studio time in order to continue to retail their products uh, from, and make products and retail their products from the Design House of Color as well. And also because it's really two businesses in one, one being an educational or training facility and the other being a retailing facility, uh, the consultant is saying that the marketing plans uh, and budgets, advertising budgets, needs to, need to be separate and distinct. The MEBA Advisory Board reviewed the request in November 12th of last year and recommended approval uh, in amount of 40,000, uh, as has the um, um, CRA Advisory Board uh, last month. The conditions to that funding, um, as always, the grantee will, shall provide a design action plan, and that's the implementation plan. That's, the, that's when they come in uh, subsequent to the approval and shows just how they're going to implement and the timeline associated with that and talk through the details, including logistics of that, uh, to the MEBA program manager, which is staff here. Um, uh, all MEBA recipients have to remain, um, in, again, in the Paramore location um, for the duration, which is a three-year duration. In this case, 595 West Church, but as long as it's in Paramore. Um, all MEBA recipients are requested to, uh, required to be opening a minimum of 40 hours a week on a five, and five days a week, and most of them are open more than that. Uh, and, of course, uh, to, to uh, just proudly display the downtown Orlando logo on the front door. Also to have visible signage which complies with all the sign regulations of the city and approval of the city, uh, city's um, ARB or appearance review board. Um, maintain clear storefront um, uh, according to code and seek tech, continue to seek technical assistance from a, an approved economic development organization on an ongoing basis. Grantee shall ex execute a lease agreement in this case um, with Church Street Retail Partners one LLC at 595 uh, West Church Street, and said lease should be made available uh, not more than five days after its execution uh, to MEBA. And finally, the grantee shall execute a security agreement and continuing guarantee simultaneously with this 
agreement. Are there any questions before I? Commissioner finish? Ortiz. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Thomas. I just need a copy of that presentation. Okay. Thank you. Certainly. Is there a motion to approve the Motion to approve. Second. Uh, let's see. Motion by Commissioner Hill. I'll take a second from Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Number seven is the companion agreement or companion CRA item to item C5 from the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the third Move. amendment to the amended and reinstated interlocal agreement? Move to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Thomas, further business to come before the CRA? There's none, Mayor. Thank you. Then we will stand adjourned. We will uh, convene the Neighborhood Improvement District Board of Directors meeting. One item of business, uh, accepting the meeting minutes and approving the actions of the Downtown South Neighborhood Improvement District Advisory Council for January 14, 2015. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan. Second. Second by Commissioner Ings. Um, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. We will um, adjourn the Neighborhood Improvement District meeting without objection. We will reconvene the City Council meeting without objection. We'll move to hearings and we have one item of business which is approving the resolution establishing a new minimum rate for limousine and luxury passenger vehicles. We had substantial discussion about this when we had the two hearings on the Chapter 55 uh, revisions that we made in, I guess, November, December time frame. Uh, any questions on that? Hearing none, um, I need a motion to so Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Hearings, ordinances, second reading, Madam Clerk, number one. This is ordinance 2014-65, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida relating to the city's growth management plan, amending future land use policy 4.1.9 relating to the airport support district, medium intensity, amending future land use figure one relating to the mixed use corridor, high intensity, amending sub-area policies relating to aviation zones, amending the future land use element relating to the over-concentration of certain land uses, amending the historic preservation element relating to the boundary of the Lake Eola Heights Historic District, amending the transportation and recreation and open space elements relating to the city's bikeway plan, designating certain land generally located at the northwest corner of the intersection of Narcusi Road and McCoy Road as airport support district medium intensity, amending the recreation and open space element relating to Park's level of service, amending the transportation element relating to the ultimate I-4 expansion, amending the urban design element relating to the downtown special sign district, providing for severability, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ng, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Number two, Madam Clerk. This is ordinance 2015-3, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, amending the city's adopted growth management plan to assign the future land use map designation of public, recreational, and institutional to approximately 5.82 ac acres of land generally located to the north of West Church Street, east of Glen Lane, south of West Central Boulevard, and west of South Terry Avenue, providing for amendment of the city's official future land use maps, providing for severability, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. So Second. Commissioner Hill. Yes. Uh, motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Is there anyone from the public by testify? I have one speaker card, Luana Gelzer. Luana Gelzer, 7674 St. Stevenson Court. It's Black History Month. Magnificent programs I was able to see online. Magnificent programs that you've had earlier this week, last week. But these next three ordinances literally, literally will destroy one of the most historical 
communities we have. This ordinance is proposing to rezone 5.82 acres in the Paramore community. What disturbed me so much about this two weeks ago when I came before you was prior to you reading these ordinances, you went on to prove the Paramore comprehensive plan, which a half a million dollars was spent. And my question to you and my question to you today is, did you include the rezoning in that comprehensive plan? And I stated to you that because of the location of Paramore, it overlaps with the Downtown Development Board, CRA, comes up to Westmoreland. So in one plan, you might see this, but the plan that you approve, this rezoning, you don't. But what saddens me today is during the month of February, the shortest month, but it's Black History Month, and here we're talking about how wonderful it is what people have contributed to our community, and yet, with a stri strike of a pen or the vote of unanimous vote, because I'm pretty sure it will be unanimous, you're destroying a community from the center, the center, without any impact studies. You can tell me whatever you want. I haven't received them, therefore they do not exist. And since I've been asking for them since August 11th, and today I still do not have them, Either you do not want me to have them or you do not have them in your possession. So I stand before you when you talk about Dr. King. Dr. King said an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So I'm here standing up for the people who cannot be here today and say hands up for justice. Save Paramore. Hands up for justice. Why this month? you're doing it, and why to this community? You're gonna rezone 5.82 acres for a soccer stadium in the middle of a com community after you just spent a half a million dollars saying what you were gonna do for the community, and that is not included in there. So I say to you again, I will continue to come. I will ask each and every one of you commissioners, what are you getting from it? Because the community have said, we're not getting anything. And if you tell us we're getting jobs, the 60 jobs will go to the owners of the team. Parking, and you're getting almost a half, a one point, I'm gonna say, you're building a stadium, they're getting the name and rights. So you're probably getting about over $100 million in the community gets to park some cars. Wow, jobs for the community. This is great economic development. Even though I told you, we provided you each with 40 statements, 40 studies saying sports venues do not bring economic development to a community, it destroys a community. So I say to you today, hands up for justice for Paramore. Hands up for justice for Paramore. Why Black History Month? Why today? And why that community? Thank you. OK, is there anyone else would like to uh, testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. Number three, Madam Clerk. This is ordinance 2015-4, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, designating certain land generally located north of West Church Street, east of Glen Lane, south of West Central Boulevard, and west of South Terry Street, and comprised of 10.5 acres of land, more or less, as planned development district, with the traditional city and Paramore Heritage zoning overlay districts on the city's official zoning maps, providing special land development regulations of the Orlando Soccer Stadium Plan Development District providing for amendment of the city's official zoning maps, providing for severability, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Is there anyone from the public who would like to testify on this matter? I have one appearance card, Lawana Gelzer. Go to process, Mayor Lawana Gelzer, 7674 St. Stephen's of Court, Orlando, Florida, zip 32835. Now this ordinance, is changing the downtown development plan, the master plan, which I actually have a copy of. 
Hey, that's the question I asked some time ago. How would this affect all of you, what you're doing with the Paramount Community Comprehensive Plan? Now, in 2003, it looked at about the same. You're doing a lot of things in downtown, and we know what you're getting ready to do for Paramore. Then you change it in 2006. I didn't bring all the copies because I'm about to wear myself down in the infrastructure. I have it. Land, but you, you're talking about what you're going to do with the Citrus Bowl, and you reached the CRA all the way down to the Citrus Bowl. You went down Church Street to pick that up. I have it here. Then you talk about the Orlando Magic um, new venue that they're getting ready to do at the um, Orlando uh, Police Department. We sold our headquarters for $13 million, then took on a bond of $106 million to build a new one on OBT at the old Holden Street School, Link's new building. Um, my concern is, wow, once again, why this soccer stadium in Paramore, corporate welfare, corporate welfare, you can say it's going to make it better for the community. You're going to say it's going to bring people downtown. But you're complaining about the crime, and we've been trying to get you to put some cameras in for a long time. But what people don't understand is in one of your master plans, that 1100 plays document that I read over the Christmas holidays, right across the street from the church, you're going to have open bars. Open bars. You have, you're going to have open bars in a community that has residential people live residential um, people living on the next street. Man, oh man, why this soccer stadium? I know why. You're getting something for it. I've asked you, but I've pulled your campaign reports. I've looked around. It's the point of least resistance. See, they can't be here. Most of them don't own their property. We do. Most of them don't own a business. My family do. But it doesn't matter if we do or not. They're still residents of the city of Orlando. But what I wanted to bring to you was something I had since 1999, because Commissioner, you talked about this last week about the displacement of businesses in the Paramount community. I'm going to make you a copy of this. Because at the time in 1999, we had many, many businesses in the Paramount community. Many. And very few have been able to sustain throughout what the city of Orlando has done in the progress and the improvement of the community. See, it's not about improving the community for all. It's a select few. A select few. So because these people cannot stand up for themselves, and because I'm not afraid and intimidated by you, because the simple fact is, I understand democracy. I'm your boss. You represent me. I bring you the concerns. I go to extra meetings because I can do that. I've been blessed to do that. It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. But to me, I'm concerned why, again, in Black History Month, we're going to destroy this community gentrify this community. You've got Creative Village, but what hurts me the most, what hurts me the most is you use the people's demographics to get the money. Your brownfield grants, everything you're doing, say it will improve and make it good, better for the community. But if you were so concerned about the community over the past, we would have lost almost 14,000 people don't tell me we all moved out because we wanted to. We moved out because we had no choice. And if you really were so concerned about the community, when I brought to your attention over a year ago that the two properties that you purchased from the community, as far as people owning their houses, you gave them $15,700 and you gave another person $15,850. No outrage from you. You weren't concerned. But now, but you'll pay four and five times the value for the soccer stadium. Now you're getting ready to rezone this, update the plan so you can put that soccer stadium right in the middle of that community. So I say once again, during the month of February, Black History Month, what a sword. But it's okay. 
We're pers we will persevere. We will survive. This is not the end. This is the beginning. So today, again, I say hands up for justice for Paramore. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to test on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. And the last one, Madam Clerk. This is Ordinance 2015-2, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, vacating, closing, and abandoning part of South Paramore Avenue, generally located north of West Church Street, east of Glen Lane, south of West Central Boulevard, and west of South Terry Avenue, and part of West Pine Street, also gen generally located north of West Church Street, east of Glen Lane, south of West Central Boulevard, and west of South Terry Avenue, and together comprised of 1.22 acres of land, more or less, providing for the execution of affecting documents, severability, correction of scrivener's errors, and an effective date. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? We have one appearance request, Lawana Gelzer. Thank you, Mayor. Lawana Gelzer, 7674 St. Stevenson Court, Orlando, Florida, zip 32835, District 6. I start this off by August 4th. You had a press conference saying you were moving to soccer stadium, and it would be cheaper to move to soccer stadium instead of having your fight with the church. Now last week you voted to spend another $4.4 million, but my concern is you're closing a street, a historical street. Mm. And when you had your press conference, you said that you were gonna have a task force, a group of individuals that were gonna make sure the history is preserved in Paramore. Sent out a press release. And you said several people lived in Paramore. And when you were questioned about it, some people got upset and wanted to put on Facebook where my mama lived at. The point is, she does live in the city and she owns property and a business. So wherever she decides to live at and lay her head, that's her business. She's 70, 70 years old. But you said Reverend Roly Murray, Paramore resident. No, he lives in Okoye. No, Abita, I'm sorry. John Henry, Paramore resident and business owner. He owns a business, a barbershop, but he don't live in Paramore. You said Ralph Armstead, an attorney I used to work with at Legal Services, Paramore resident. He don't live in Paramore. He lives in Bell Out. You said Mary Longstreet, Paramore resident. She don't live in Paramore. Pull the voter record up, just outside of Paramore, but close. Then you put about four city staffs on that, Bernard Marsh. Um, you didn't say Dr. Spoonie lived in Paramount, but he's the mayor, I uh, mean, the minister of uh, Mount Zion, the church my family used to attend. But the only person on this board was Ann Brown, a resident of Paramore. See, I wouldn't be here if you wouldn't lie to the people. You're liars. You put a press release out, and when you were questioned, instead of coming back and say you made a mistake, you want to attack. Now, my concern is the church. You're closing this street. I've asked for that impact study since August 11th. Charles, I still don't have it. I don't know if you've sent it over, but I don't have it. I'll be up to the sixth or seventh floor to try to get a copy of it. But I just have a problem when I said to you two weeks ago, did you put the horse before the cock? Because you made all of these decisions to move that soccer stadium, said it was going to save us some money. Now you're putting on historical Paramore right in the middle of a community. And you say that's okay, but we can't find any evidence that you did the proper studying and what the impact would be to the community. Now you're moving the fire station over on Robinson Street. That's nice, but it's gonna cost us $106 million with the, fire, with the uh, OPD headquarters, the new headquarters. So I don't know if that really was a good deal for us. So Mayor, on August 4th, I don't know if you did, but I said you hastily made a decision to move the soccer stadium. And that hasty decision is costing the taxpayers and the community a lot of money. 
But you say we're going to make that money back. And I know that's not to be true. Because we follow the numbers and we look at what is going on. But I, I just keep saying to myself, why this community and why y'all doing this to these people in Paramore? Because if you care about it so much, wouldn't you try to work with the people and come up with a better deal instead of shoving something down their throat? Or is it you have got to prove the people that you have control over the people in Paramore and the rest of those individuals who question you? Because if we're questioning you, something must be wrong with us. Because you shouldn't be challenged. You know what's best for the community. Well, I'm telling you, if you knew what's best for the community and you've had all of this evidence sitting on your desk saying, maybe, take a step back. What is the community gaining from this? Not with that 1%. But the community is gaining. Maybe you can fix this problem. But I think based on your past history over the last year and a half, <laughs> you don't care about the community. You say you do, but you don't. You can put out everything. You can have meetings after meetings. You can put whatever you want out there. You can say it. But your actions speaks louder their words and your actions today indicate you do not care about Paramore. So in closing, I'm going to find my little sign to match up with my t-shirt that a friend, a business owner in the Paramore community <coughs> made for me. Hands up for justice. Save Paramore. Because we are talking about Dr. Keene and social justice. But injustice okay, anywhere yeah, five is a threat is to justice everywhere. Dr. King, thank you. Thank you for your opinion. You're always welcome here to share it. Thank you. I just think you don't say it to me in a long time, man. Well, I don't know why you use the term we, though, because I've never seen anybody agree with you. <laughs> okay, further discussion. Uh, hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And so the motion carries. That is uh, the last formal business of the day. Alana.